The most intimidating power tool for new woodworkers is, without a doubt, the table saw. Unfortunately, it's also the most useful and the most versatile tool in the wood shop. I want to point out that there are plenty of woodworkers and DIYers who make lots of projects without owning a table saw at all. There's alternatives for making any cut you can make with a table saw, including a jigsaw, a bandsaw, a miter saw, a circular saw even a plain old hand saw. But using a table saw will make all of those cuts faster, easier, and more accurate. I believe a table saw is also a very safe tool to use when used properly and understanding where the potential dangers lie. In this video is a simple checklist that I want you to observe and follow every time you use your table saw. And if you're already a seasoned user of a table saw, I want this video to serve as a reminder. Probably the biggest danger of using any power tool is becoming complacent and forgetting about procedures. It's good to get comfortable using a power tool, but just don't get lazy. It's important to understand the two most common injuries on a table saw. The first and most obvious is cutting a finger, or worse, cutting a finger off. To virtually eliminate the possibility of cutting a finger, consider buying a table saw with flesh sensing technology that'll shut down the instant your finger touches the moving blade. And that means paying a premium price on a saw stop, a Festool brand. Unfortunately, until certain patents expire, they're the only game in town and there's no affordable alternatives. But that doesn't mean you can't operate a normal table saw perfectly safely. Millions of people use table saws every day without ever having an accident. The second and far more common injury is due to kickback, which can also send you to the hospital. This occurs when a cutoff piece of wood is grabbed by the upward spinning teeth on the rear side of the blade and the piece is thrown toward you. This can happen if a loose piece slides into the blade or if you drop a piece of wood onto the spinning blade. But the far worse variety is when a piece gets wedged between the blade and a rip fence causing it to shoot back at the speed of a bullet. Never make a cross cut using both a rip fence and a miter gauge. I want to point out that a blade guard will prevent you from dropping a piece on the blade and prevent you from inadvertently skimming your hand over the blade. You should use one. So why don't I use one? Well, I made a whole video about that. You can watch it up here or click the link in the description. Okay, let's get started. This is a checklist that I go through before I make every cut. If you need a reminder, I've made a PDF that you can download. There's a link down in the description. There are exceptions to all of these, but in general, this system is the safest and most efficient way to approach a table saw. Never operate a saw without wearing safety glasses. I highly recommend hearing protection too, and no matter how good your dust collection system is, a filter mask will reduce the amount of harmful sawdust particles that enter your lungs. Longtime viewers of this show have heard me preach about the importance of a riving knife a million times, so here's a million and one. A riving knife is the most effective way of preventing kickback. This simple metal piece keeps your cutoff board from sliding into the rear of the blade. It also helps keep a board from pinching the blade if internal stresses cause it to bind. You might have removed the riving knife for making dados or other special cuts, so just do a quick check and make sure that the riving knife is back in place. I personally believe it's best to expose as little of the blade as possible. Raise the blade up just slightly higher than the thickness of the board you need to cut. I feel a lot more comfortable making this cut rather than this cut. There's nothing worse than getting halfway through a cut and realizing your push block or push sticks are back on your workbench or somewhere else out of reach. Always have them in a place where you can easily access them while in the middle of a cut. This half lap handy cart is a great way to keep everything at reach. It's part of my weekend workshop course. Get access to this as well as all the other shop fixtures and cabinets in my shop over at theweekendworkshop.com. Oh, and by the way, if you do find yourself in the middle of a cut needing a push stick, resist the temptation to push the board through with your hand just this one time. Instead, turn off the saw, get the push block, and continue. Back your board up a little bit, though, before you power the saw back on. 
With every cut on the saw, you're gonna be turning one board into two. So decide which part is gonna be your keeper and which is the off cut. In general, I prefer to control the work piece, the one that I'm keeping. Usually that's the side that runs along the rip fence or the side against the miter gauge. There's plenty of exceptions though, but it's important to think about when setting up for a cut, especially when it poses a safety issue. For instance, if I needed to cut a bunch of of two inch long blocks. I wouldn't set up a two inch stop on my miter gauge because most of this board would be unsupported and unstable. Plus, I don't like getting my fingers that close to the blade. In this case, I would set up a spacer block against my rip fence. Another case might be if you need to rip a very thin strip. It would be very difficult to control the workpiece with the rip fence this close to the blade. Move the fence over so that the strip is on the outside. Think it through and give consideration to this important step. Okay, this final step is so effective and so important that I'm calling it the table saw golden rule. I couldn't come up with a better name than that. It goes like this, never perform without a rehearsal. Call it a rehearsal or maybe just a dry run. It just means making a complete imaginary cut with the saw turned off. Even with decades of experience, I still do this before every single cut. Place your workpiece on the table in its starting position. Is it fully supported? If not, how will you support it? Check that you can reach the power switch. Where will you position your body throughout the cut? As best as you comfortably can, try to keep your body positioned to the side of the blade rather than directly in line. If you do experience kickback, at least your body will be out of the line of fire. How will you position your hands throughout the entire cut? This is a super important one. Practice that. You may want to lower the blade to practice with your actual board. Make sure your hands are well away from the blade through the entire procedure. Don't forget about what happens after the cut is complete. What will happen to the cutoff? You may need to set up an outfeed support. If you're cutting several pieces, can you move the off cut pieces out of the way? Way. Do you have a place to set your keeper pieces? Can you make the cuts without getting into a weird position? If you need to shut off the power for some reason, can you easily reach the switch? Again, just think all of this through logically. Every cut is gonna be slightly different and there are some specialty cuts that will require extra setup and consideration. Most importantly, and this may sound strange, but listen to that little voice in your head that might be raising some red flags. Even after all these years of woodworking, I still sometimes set up a cut that just doesn't feel quite right. So I come up with a different solution. Never make any cut that just feels uncomfortable. If something about your setup feels a little weird, it probably is. And even if you get that sense in the middle of a cut, just stop, shut down the saw and come up with a better method. Hey, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step approach to learning woodworking, check out The Weekend Woodworker. I'll show you everything you need to get started and the tools you'll need and you'll get to build your very first actual project this weekend, no experience necessary. Head over to weekendwoodworkercourse.com and sign up today. Thanks everybody, I'll see you next time.